Let's talk a little bit more about notes relation. So if I start with a whole note, we know that such note is equal to four beats. Now, in order to fill out the same time with another note values, I can write two half notes. Each half note represents two beats, which means if I'll combine them, they will give me nothing else but four beats, which is an entire whole note. Now, I also use quarter note if I decide to fill out my measure with more notes and I need to play them in the same measure and make it more busy, I can use quarter notes, but in this case, I can write four of them. Because each quarter note equals to only one beat. Right now, if I combine all four notes, then it gives me an entire measure of four four time signature, the measure that whole note will occupy. Now, if we start to talk about notes that are shorter than a beat, because here all notes were notes that equal to a beat or longer than a beat. Now we have notes that are shorter. For example, if I'll start with my quarter note, we know that such note equals to only one beat. If I'll decide to use, let's say, eighth notes, notes that are twice faster, how many of them can I fit? Only two. Every eighth note equal to only half of a beat. which means right now two halves give me an entire beat. Although, depending on music situation, these notes can be written separately the way they're written right here, or they can be combined, and it's called group of two eighth notes. Now notice that instead of two flags, we're using only one beam. So beam works as a flag if you're combining notes. Although, it's not going to sound different than the previous, it's more a visual representation of a note value that these notes are occupied. So from that point, it helps you to count and track these notes much better while you're playing music. Now, let's talk about notes that are even shorter. For example, if I'll start with an eighth note. We know such note equals to only half of a beat. What if I'll decide? to play two notes over that one. I need to use 16th note values. So right now, I can write two 16th notes that will occupy the same amount of time. So in this case, every 16th note equal to one fourth of a beat. If I combine them together, it gives me half of the beat that eighth note is occupies. Again, if I'll decide to write them combined in a group of two, I can do that, not always depending on situation, depending where these notes are placed in a measure. But for right now, we try to establish their relation so we can group them in a group of two. Notice that here we have two beams, because each beam will represent a flag of our 16th note. So right now, I have two beams when I'm trying to represent two flags of 16th note, and I have a one beam if I try to represent one flag of an eighth note. Of course, the last thing is what if we will take our quarter note and try to fill out quarter note with 16th? How many of them can we fit? We know that one quarter note equals to one beat. Every 16th note equals to a quarter of a beat, which means even by that ratio you can tell me that we will have four sixteenth notes inside of one quarter, inside of one beat. Again, we can write them separately. Right now, you'll see that these are the notes with two flags, and again, each of them represents one quarter of a beat. Means they will representing an entire beat altogether. This is why we can combine them. We can combine them what is called in group of four. So when you have four sixteenth notes that are played over one quarter, instead of combining them in a groups of two, you can combine them in a group of four. These notes look slightly different than ones that are written independently, but although they will not affect the way they are played, it's more visual representation of a note that they're related to. So, in some time signatures and in some meters, when your eighth note occupies a beat, 
you will combine your 16th notes in a groups of two. That makes much more sense. But in some meters where your beat will be occupying only one quarter note, in this case, you will write your 16th notes in a groups of four, because right now, visually, they will represent much more clear every click of a metronome. This is, are the basics about note relations and their grouping, so we'll give you an idea how notes can be written. They're not always written separately because it will be too complex to track them. But although sometimes they combined, and sometimes they combined in some different ways, which is you might see in the music all the time when your eighth notes are combined with sixteenths and etc. But here, right now, you will see much more clear a relation between notes into each other. So, for example, you see that we have two eighth notes in a one quarter. We have two sixteenth notes in a one eighth. We have four sixteenths in a one quarter. And of course, these are notes that are shorter than a beat. And we have notes that are equal to a beat and longer. We have whole note that's equal to four beats. We have two half notes that are equal to four beats as well, because two plus two gives us a four. And we have four quarter notes that equal to a whole as well, because each of them equals to a one beat, and combining one plus one plus one plus another one gives you four. So this is our basics about note relations that you might see in the music that you're playing.